welcome to the very first season of House of Homebrew Dragon Song. We're so excited to have you guys here. We have a wonderful show planned for you. My name is James Logan. I'll be your dungeon master through this. Sitting and starting at my left, we have Haley Jackson Boucher playing Blair Aberdeen Buchanan. We have Josh Malloy playing Aceta Minofin. Copyrighted by him, no one else. We also have Sonny Elkhart, played by Mason Dodson. We have CJ Goodwin, playing Nemea Omada. We have Dominic Boucher, playing Juniper Hops. And last and but not least, Chance Owen, playing Fist. Thank you for joining us. Before we get started, I'm gonna pass you guys over to our bartender. His name is Logan Logan. He is an identical twin of mine, slightly less handsome, but even more talented. Logan, can you tell us about the drink we're drinking today and a little bit about our sponsor? Thanks, James Logan. Really appreciate the passive aggressive comments. Hi, everybody. My name is Logan Logan. I am gonna be your bartender today, and today we're gonna to be making a morning sun martini. This is a specialty of myself fully made in my own brain. It's gonna be very, very simple. We're gonna actually use today a flavored vodka, the peach and orange blossom from Kettle One. Now, the reason I use this, and usually I don't use flavored vodka is because Kettle One did do a very good job of balancing the flavor without making it seem chemically. Not a sponsor, just very good. So we're gonna do an ounce and a half of this vodka into your shaker. Very quick and easy. Then we're gonna actually take the Aperol and do an entire ounce of that in as well. So this is going to be two full ounces of liquor, two and a half full ounces of liquor, essentially just your normal martini pour. So even though this won't taste like it's full of booze, it is, so be careful. Then we're gonna go ahead and take some fresh squeezed lemon juice. That's gonna be three quarters of an ounce, 0. 0.75 right into our shaker tin. And lastly, a half an ounce of simple syrup, a rich simple syrup to be specific. There we are, just like that. Get some ice in our shaker and shake that bad boy up. Now with this one, you're gonna wanna shake it very well, get all of those ingredients combined together, and then we'll be pouring it on our tuna glass. Now, with every cocktail that you are pouring that's not gonna be served over ice, what you're gonna wanna do is called a double strain. So you got your single strainer right here, double wire mesh strainer right here. This is going to keep all those ice chips that you just created out of the drink and give it a nice, smooth, silky mouthfeel. Now to finish it off, I'm gonna go ahead and get an orange peel to garnish, quick and easy. And what this is gonna do is get that nice orange candy smell on the nose, which then enhances the rest of the drink. Get a nice good expression over the top of that. Wipe it around the rim. And then you can put a little bit where your fingers are gonna be going. So that way, every time you take another sip, another sniff, anytime your hand gets near your face, you want another drink. Twist that up, drop it in there, and cheers. Morning Sun Martini. Back to you, James Logan. Thank you so much, Logan Logan. I appreciate you. Can't wait to try this. The Morning Sun Martini. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Let's have a good game. Go on. Dumbbell. Cheers. 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 Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's good stuff. Mm. That's really of, good. It That's tastes really like good. a morning sun. <laughs> oh. As we fall in, we find our young adventurers in the center of the country of Nador. The Nadorian Empire has been taken over by the elves approximately 172 years ago. Therefore, it is the 172nd year of the new Karelian calendar. Today is Solus Day. It is the fifth day of Moon Glow. And we find our adventurers headed to the den. As the camera comes down, we see a smattering of people along a road headed deep into the wilderness along a merchant's caravan. Uh, at this caravan, there are two carts, one in the front, one in the back, with quite a few of the group, not necessarily specifically you guys, but the people that are bringing uh, supplies to the den, kind of in between those two carts. As we come in, 
Who wants to go first? <laughs> um, my name is Blair Aberdeen Buchanan. I'm 13 years old. Um, I am a forest gnome. I come from Opal City, and I've got um, a blue eye and a green eye. It's one of my favorite things about me. Um, and I'm studying to be a divination wizard. Um, I really enjoy reading, and my best friend is a squirrel. So that's a little bit about me. And Blair, where are you right now? Where? In the caravan. Um, I'd say toward the front. Toward the front? Yeah, obviously. Absolutely. We see a tiny little gnome running along, trying to keep pace with the oxen and uh, the cartwheels about as tall as she is, with this cute little wizard hat on top, this big bushy red hair kind of cascading behind her shoulders. Uh, I believe it was a a green crocheted top and a little black cinch around the waist as she's just scurrying along next to uh, the main cart driver near the front of the caravan, uh, Durston. Durston? Mm -hmm. Uh, Durston looks down at you and he says, hey, do you, do you want to keep running next to it or do you would you rather just jump in the back with uh, some of your friends? Oh, I would love a ride. That would be great, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Hop on I didn't there. realize that was an option. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of, he kind of like slows down the oxen real quick and allows uh, you a moment to kind of jump in there. Um, you jump up into the back of the wagon and you see a herringon man next to a giant hulking monkey figure. Dom and Chance, would you please like to introduce your characters? How you going? Uh, the name's Juniper. Juniper perhaps five six uh, here and gone, bad. I got my violin on me, and uh, I'm just happy to be here. I uh, I've got black hair and pants and uh, a little vest, no shirt, because uh, uh, I've got fur. Who needs a shirt? Uh, and who needs a what? Shirt. <laughs> <laughs> who needs a shirt? <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm just playing some music. Fantastic. Yeah. Fist, as you're sitting next to him, meditating, looking out for any dangers. What's Fist up to right before Blair jumps in the cart? I'm uh, just keeping an eye on things. Keeping an eye on things. Looking around. As you jump into the back of this cart, uh, you see the, the big hulking monkey just kind of sitting cross-legged, but up on the edge of the cart, balanced, as he's just kind of surveying and watching what's happening as they go by. Um, as you jump up, do you guys greet her in any way? How you going? Hello. How are I'm, you? I'm just playing my tune. That's lovely. <laughs> Where'd you uh, learn to do that? You know, I, I picked it up here and there, you know? What's your name? Juniper. Juniper Hops. I'm Blair. It's nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. What's your name? Fist. Fist? All right, give her a little more than that there, monk. Come on. <clears throat> Good to meet you. That's it's all a pleasure get. to meet you. I've never met one of you before. One of me? A monkey. A monkey man. Not a monkey. What are you? Apling. Apling. Okay, I'll remember that. Well, it's a pleasure to meet both of you. I have to get back to my studies. <laughs> As Blair tries to cut the tension of Fist just staring her down, even though he's twice her height, um, I want to actually cut to Nemea. Where is Nemea walking in this caravan? I'm near the back. I, I'm, you know, hanging on my own, seeing mm -hmm. what's up. I don't know anybody mm -hmm. around here, so just kind of doing my thing. I'm a, about 5'4", got pink skin, some horns are starting to come in. They're not that big yet. Nice tail going on, and I've learned that people are not very friendly most of the time because of my appearance, so... I'm just doing my own thing. I've got a cloak on. Occasionally, I'll pull it over my face. Mm -hmm. Don't want to talk to people. As you're as you're wandering in the back of uh, the caravan, trying to keep your distance, uh, you just kind of start to to wander off in your mind, and and some of the memories of your childhood start to kind of flit in. And as you're watching all these other people, you can't quite see the front of the caravan, but you see, you know. A couple friends walking next to each other, a couple, a couple teenage boys that are just kind of like tripping each other and just talking and laughing as they walk. And it brings to mind uh, one of those afternoons you had uh, with Bedris, your, your 
essentially the closest person that you've ever had back in the monastery where you were trained. Uh, you and Bedris are sparring, you guys are going back and forth, um, and Bedris trips you and knocks you to the ground. Uh, and just is kind of standing over you with this big toothy grin, his horns also starting to come in, but not quite there, as he reaches down a hand to you and says, you gotta be quicker than that. Come on, are you kidding me? If you're gonna shift your weight back, you have to shift it back and get out of the way, otherwise I'm just picking that leg up and flipping you over every time. I miss him. Good man. And then as you just continue to relive this memory, the, the autumn air starting to flow in. You see the colors just beginning to change in the trees, just the very edges of them starting to turn a little bit yellowish. Nothing's quite red yet. Um, and the dust is just wafting around you as you walk in silence. Um, I'm going to cut actually over to our good friend Aceta Minofin. Where do you find yourself in this caravan? I'm... Uh... I just finished praying. Uh, my medall medallion, uh, which is a sun figure, hangs outside of my white and gold inlay robes, which uh, run the length of my legs. Um, I had just finished praying, and so I noticed uh, Nemea lost kind of in thought, and um, I am not really sure where this car caravan's uh, heading, or who's part of it, or who's in it, or what it's doing. Um, but I thought well, that... you know it's headed to the den with supplies. Yeah, that's yeah. about all I know. I heard den and supplies, and I was on board. I like both of those things. Um, and so I thought that it would be best to make a friend early on. So, um, hi. <clears throat> My hey name there. is uh, Asita. How are you? I'm all right. Great, uh, great horns. Thank you. Um... Do you know where we're going? Oh, what this like den thing is? Uh, it's Guild. That's about all I guild. know. Yeah, I'm hoping to find my friend. I like Guild. I, won't, I haven't been there much, uh, but I like it. It's nice. Um, what was your name again? Sorry. My name's Nemea. Nemea. Yeah. A uh, beautiful name. Thank you. Beautiful name. Um, where are you from? Oh, I I actually came from the monastery. I, the uh, Demetrian Temple. Oh, the Demetrian Temple. Yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? What is what is that? What do you do there? It's a monastery, so we trained. You know. Okay. Yeah, I learned how to fight. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm from a temp. Uh, I'm from a temple, not a monastery. Oh, I okay. thought about this cool. Um, I'm from the uh, Amaranthic Temple. And uh, yeah, so I'm a, a child of light, and I, I study uh, the teachings of God, Paylor, and and um, our our main principles and pillars of our religion, our love, healing, hope, and and kindness. So um, I just wanted to reach out a friendly hand, yeah, again, I guess, and um, just say that um, your uh, your your light. Amplifies mine, and and uh, I hope that wherever this is taking us, we we become fast friends and, and uh, start a nice fun journey together. Uh, Nemea, right? Okay. Asita. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for remembering. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave you to your uh, prayers. All right. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Uh, Sunny, where do we find you in this caravan headed toward the den of the Iron Foxes? You know, I uh, kind of hitched a ride secretly on this caravan, jumped in the back, I'm hiding with some of the supplies. It's uh, near a chicken coop, some feathers flying around in the air, kind of rattling around with the cages, um, observing just through the back, you know, watching all the other people following along. Uh, my name's Sonny Elkhart. I'm 17 years old. Um, I am a dark-haired teenager. <laughs> Some people say I have an attitude problem, but uh, I don't know, man. I just don't don't really care for a lot of people. You know, I've had to be on my own for a while, and uh, until people prove themselves to me, I don't care to be their friend. Kind of got to earn respect, you know. I'm waiting, waiting to get to this guild. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to, uh, I got things to do back at my my home. Mm -hmm. Some uh, a flock, not a flock. <laughs> A, uh, it's like a flock, but bigger. It's a like herd. A it's a herd, herd maybe. <laughs> a gaggle. A gaggle. <laughs> a gaggle of elk. <laughs> There's a herd of elk waiting on me. Uh, so I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. Fantastic. Uh, you see 
Sonny just kind of, he's got no sleeves on his jacket. His staff is kind of wedged in between a couple of the like chicken coops because they keep trying to tip over. And uh, Sonny's just kind of sitting there, just picking at his fingernails, waiting very patiently, very ready to finally get to the Iron Foxes and try and find the people that are going to make him strong enough to take on the role that he believes he has. As you guys continue to walk, at this point it's about two in the afternoon. Suddenly you round a bend. You've been walking along the river. The river's been on your right this entire time as you've been heading south. And as you round a bend, you see the other large river coming together. And in between that is the den. It's a giant compound. Um, three buildings on this large plot of land, one central building, and then two smaller ones off to the side. And over the archway is a giant gray fox. As you guys walk up, you see the merchants start kind of like reorganizing their wares. Somebody kind of like comes around, sees Sunny. Uh, just kind of like starts trying to readjust the chicken coops and try to make sure that they're all in the same place as they were. Uh, and they kind of look at Sonny and they go, oh, I, sorry, I forgot to be back here. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the ride. Uh, yeah, no, no problem. I appreciate you. And uh, thanks for helping me calm all of these guys down. They, they get, I don't think they know that they're going to go get slaughtered and fed to a bunch of hungry, you know, monster hunters, but they get a little, they get a little antsy once we put them in the cart. So I appreciate your help on that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> As you guys pull into the <laughs> courtyard, there's a small sort of reflecting pond right in front of the main building with a wraparound dirt driveway that comes back out and out of the compound. As all the carts pull up, you guys all start kind of meandering closer to each other because there is one door here and you can hear inside just raucous men shouting, laughing, and having a great time with them boys. Oh, all right, Fist, this is what we've been looking for. This, this is it, we're here. Finally made it. All right, yeah. Uh, what is it? The den. Yeah, but like, what were you looking for? The Iron Foxes. Yeah. This, we're, oh. we're here, <laughs> this, this is what we were looking for. She I stupid thought, or something? No, I thought you had a deep. <laughs> looking for the iron foxes, as we all know. Anyway, are you writing this down? What? Are you writing writing this down? What are your business? Can I go to take a book? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can go to try to take a book. I gotta roll for that. Oh, okay. Yes, Let's yeah. see how this goes. Twelve. Plus oh, wait. This is <laughs> this is no! I got a one. <laughs> So, give me uh, a <laughs> you, you reach over and just snatch it out of her tiny little hands, you and your six foot monkey body. She's been writing everything down. Right. Well, well I don't want to forget. They can, use can I have my book back, right. please? No, Sam, this is a little rude. It's just, don't read it. I'm in his diary. All right, Fist? Thank All right. you. Here you go, little one. Uh, I don't like little one, rabbit guy. The name's Juniper. But, Juniper. Uh, the name's Blair, not Little One. Blair? Blair. Right. Little One has little respect. All right. Uh, well, <laughs> good to meet you. Uh, have fun taking notes, notes, or whatever. Uh, I'm going in there. <laughs> and I head toward that, the building where the... Absolutely, 100%. Um, as you walk straight into the doorway, you open it up and immediately music fills the room. You see a bunch of different people, there's probably about dozen, dozen and a half guys, just all, guys and girls, all mingling around in this room. There's a couple people that have kind of clicked together in major groups in there. As you walk in, you see this grand hall as you open the door. There's tables strewn everywhere. There are barrels of mead all along the wall. You see a giant elk antler chandelier hanging from the ceiling in the main sort of atrium of the room. Um, and as you enter, you hear a voice shout over to you from where the music's coming from. And you hear the guy go, Is that Juniper? What? Holy shit, you made it! I can't believe you guys actually came. That's incredible. Good to see you, Barry. Good to see you guys, too. Let me just wrap this up here. I'll come over and get y'all a drink, all right? All right. Perfect. And you guys see this, uh, uh, 
5'11", pushing six foot bard. He's got black hair, this tan robe, and he's got this gorgeous lute uh, with purple etchings all over it as he's just over in the corner playing music for all of these monster hunters as they're in the middle of the day getting drunk and having a good time. Uh, what does anybody else do as you guys enter? Walk straight to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, uh, can I get a drink, please? Uh, you see a guy that was kind of like positioned near one of the barrels of mead that was just, there's just a bunch of cups there. And he's kind of sitting there, just like, you, you could mistake him for a bartender if you were a teenager and had never really been in a bar, but like all the cups are there. So it makes it like, this is the guy that gets it for you. And you see, he kind of looks up and goes, you want a yeah? <laughs> I'd like a drink. Mead? You want it for sure, dude. I want that too. Uh, so there's two spouts right here, and you could use either one of them, and both of them work. And, and you see, he's pointing at absolutely just one spout. <laughs> <laughs> so both, if, if you kind of have to guess which one's real, it's like a, it's like a fun game to play. And so you, just, you want you, I'll get you some. And he goes and he grabs a cup and he puts it underneath and pulls it and then it just pours all over his arm. <laughs> uh, I and think. Goes, oh shit! I got. I was just saying, I got. Some I can. Uh, I think I can. You got. I you think got I can it, do and it. it's overflowing. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Yeah, that's I'm, good. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, hey! I got a little spillage. There um, you go. I've also walked up. As, as this is happening, oh. so I'm that way. And uh, he, he he hands it over to you, just fully, like the entire thing is just frothy <laughs> and cold and sticky, and so is he, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you're right, have you figured Whoa. out this siege? Have you figured out this, this siege? I think uh, he'll pour you a glass if you want a glass. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. You, you need, you need, uh-huh. Could I get, could I get a glass? Get the rabbit some uh, some meat. Uh. I'm just name? gonna. Uh, what happened? Shoot it yes, I I got. Hey, I, I got. I'm the guy. I'm the guy that, that I do this and mm -hmm. I do it good. And let me get you another. And he just fully misses it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just grab one of the cups and like start filling it up. Perfect. Well, it's, it's not that hard. Sunny. Sunny. All right. Nice to meet you, Sunny. I'll see you around. Fist. I'm not drinking today. All right. Suit yourself, and I go and find Perry. <clears throat> so me and I are still outside, and we look up at the gray, giant gray fox sign. Do you think this is the den of the gray foxes? I think there's a pretty good chance, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna head in. Okay. And I'm just gonna pray, uh, you go ahead, I'm just gonna pray <laughs> a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> <I'm walking. laughs> <laughs> uh, Nemea, when you walk in, you see um, same thing, but now the, there's a guy just fully passed out on the floor next to where the meat is. Uh, you see a tall, black-haired teenager. He's got a staff strung across his back, kind of tattered, dirty clothes, just kind of just drinking away, looking down at this fucking idiot. Uh, and you see the rabbit and the kind of monkey-looking dude that you were able to see as you were traveling with this caravan, uh, wandering toward the bard. Excellent. I clock everybody, but keep walking. I'm looking for Bedros. Yeah. I'm hoping he's here. Go ahead and make the first roll of the game. All right. Oh, the first first solo first, roll because yeah. athletics check and oh, all that, yeah. you know. But this is this is more important. <laughs> Plus two, seven. Seven. Yeah. Still don't see that. Still <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, you kind of start casing the joint a little bit. You you tuck into those little nooks and crannies and shadows. I mean, this place is, it's, it's well lit, don't get me wrong, but it's also just natural light right now. It's the middle of the day. Uh, around that sort of top part of the room where the chandelier is hanging, uh, there's light and windows all around that sort of a raised area in the ceiling. Um, and you see just beams of light coming through the dust and you kind of light-footedly bounce between them almost on instinct as you're wandering through the room trying to figure out everybody's vibe and the situation here. Um, uh, Blair, what are you doing as you scamper your way into this room? I uh, am in awe, taking everything in. Mm -hmm. um, 
taking notes. Yes. And I find a area to go sit and read. Fantastic. Um, you find a nice little spot. Uh, it's one of the few tables that doesn't have people at it actively. Um, and you see right next to you, um, just he's one table over and just kind of leaned up, uh, just kind of leaned back in his chair like this. He's got a hood over his head and he just kind of looks over. What are you reading? Oh, um, I'm just catching up on my monster studies. I figure, you know, that will come in clutch, so. I mean, that does make sense. It would it would come in clutch. Yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, have you heard of it? It's just uh, Monsters and Whispers of the Forest. Monsters and Whispers of the Forest? No, I actually haven't heard of that one before. Really? Yeah. Well, I figured that it will be helpful because I'm from the forest, so that's what mm. I'm trying to read about first. Um, and then I'm going to move on to like sea monsters and desert monsters mm. and things that I have not faced yet. Gotcha. That's What's your name? Uh, Luke. And he reaches over his hand. And he's just this <laughs> hand. hand. And he, you see his, his fingers are, are like long and elegant, but they're, when he grips your hand back, there's just this sure strength in his hand. It's, it's like almost imposing, but he doesn't squeeze. He doesn't intend to harm anybody. And he goes, it's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. My name's mm -hmm. Blair. Absolutely. How long have you been here? I, you know, I just kind of pop in, pop out whenever. Uh, the Iron Foxes have always been kind to anybody that hunts the things of the night, and uh, that's what I do. What do you hunt? I, demons, mostly. Oh, that is so fascinating. <laughs> she takes notes, like, so fast. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of demons did you fight recently? Uh, recently, I found uh, just a small cluster of imps that had been summoned by a warlock, and then the warlock was killed by those imps because they tried to uh, basically summon too many. Um, and they ate them sort of like when you die in a room and you had a cat in there, but the door is closed. Oh, wow. But the imps could have left. It was a choice. It was definitely a choice. That's very graphic. Yeah. How old I'm, are you? I should actually ask, how old are you? I sh maybe I shouldn't say that to... How old are you? I'm 13. That's, I find that's, it, old, that's old enough I to hear find about it very You're being a monster hunter. Who cares? Exactly. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. No, 100%. I want you to tell me everything, because that sounds like the most fascinating life I've ever heard. Uh, I just live in a tree, dude. I have nothing going on. I read books, I work in a library, I go home to my family in a tree, and, and that's all. So, like, this stuff is so cool. I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not much of a storyteller, but if there is more stuff that you want to learn about monsters, I'm pretty specific in what I do. What am I supposed to do here with all of these people? Well, these... Everybody's just having a good time and resting. A lot of people just came back to the den to, you know, recoup. We knew that there was supplies coming in, so a lot of people wanted to grab food and then head out. Uh, the den used to be a lot more populated, uh, but with the recent spike in random magical events happening all over the continent, it's uh, it's become much much harder to keep our resources in one place, and people have gotten much more spread out. What kind of magical events? I am not well versed in Arcana, but I, as I understand it, when the elves left their homelands and they took over Nador, they also left a hole in the magical ecosystem. Essentially, the, the aberrations that were always kept at bay by wood elves and the like, and High elves having all of their magic now available for other scholars to get to instead of being kept in their high towers has influenced people to use more and more outrageous magic, and it's gotten to a point where our forces are stretched pretty thin. Wow. That is so fascinating. Where do I start then? Because I've never hunted a monster before, and I'm here to learn how. I am small as you can see. And so I'm not really sure what would uh, what I could do to help, but I know it's a problem. Um, so what do you think I should do? Well, first thing that I would do is I would find the library here. Obviously, that's where I was headed. Where is it? I can describe to you, it's just up. <laughs> it's, so it's, it's up a flight of stairs over to the right. So the, the, the den is sort of, you walked in the front 
And it's this big sort of like rectangle almost um, with a small uh, subsect of it that's like connected by one tunnel bridge. And then it's like lifted up off the ground on uh, pillars. There's a whole like arcana laboratory and partial library there. Perfect. But I would recommend more than anything, especially if this is your first time, it's dangerous out there. Find some people to help you. Got it. People to help me. What kind of people? Uh, you know, just people that you can rely on, people that you can trust, and people that when the ships are down, they'll have you back. <clears throat> Who do you rely on? Well, I'm not the best example. I uh, kind of lost my group. and Drama. Drama. I hate yeah, well, drama. It's drama. It's drama. <laughs> People to rely on. Well, I got that. I'm going to go to the library because I am so excited to see this room. So it's very nice to meet you, Luke. Nice to meet you too, Blair. Absolutely. And he just kind of like leans back in his chair. Mm -hmm. I want to try to pickpocket the drunken man laying on the ground. Uh, <laughs> roll a stealth check for me. You're mainly trying to beat the passive perception of other people around you. Um... So roll a stealth check to hide what you're doing. Okay. And then we'll go. Because he's unconscious, right? Yeah. Now. You, like, if nobody is here, that's not even a question. Boom. How did you bounce it out of the box? It went in the box and it bounced Put some rubber in the bottom. Yeah, like 11. 11 plus? My stealth. deception? Stealth. Uh, stealth. stealth. Zero. So 11. <laughs> Um, as you start kind of like leaning down and trying to rummage around these guys' pockets, uh, you hear a loud voice come from behind you. And he goes, Oi, what are you doing there, lads? What? No, 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 no. He's asleep. Just let him sleep. I was just making sure he was okay. Uh, he had fallen. I just didn't. Uh. And you see this this uh, <laughs> short dwarf with like a mohawk on top of his head and a long braid down his back and this big long beard in front of him. Basically no clothes except his pants. There's like tatters essentially. Just like walking sturdily <laughs> towards you. And he's going, oh, you're, so you're just making sure he's okay. I was just making sure you're, he, yeah. Well, yeah. deception yeah. check for me, for sure. A one. Plus two. Fuck. You weren't planning this, right? No, but I told you this shit happens. Um, he grabs you by the front of your shirt and just straight picks you up. <laughs> You, you're, like, honestly, you're about now just, like, the same height as some of the taller guys in the room, because he is very short, but he, like, you can feel the strength in his arms that it was, like, it was, like, lifting up a cup for him. He just kind of, <laughs> he just kind of, like, popped you up in the air, and he stares deep in your eyes, and he goes, I know a pickpocket when I see you on land. What do you think you're doing here? What, why did you come to the den trying to steal from us? I'm not trying to, I wasn't trying to steal. Liar. All right. Don't lie to me again, otherwise, and he le like he takes one arm off of you and then grabs an axe with his other hand and just flips it up. Okay. Like, Don't lie to me again, otherwise I'm going to have to use this. Okay, okay. Calm down. You're a big boy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I see that, okay? I'm not trying to... Not try I'm sorry. I, I came here. I'm looking for help, okay? I'm a little light in the pockets. I'm, I was hoping maybe... I'm, not, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm not trying to lie. Okay. Please. 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 I'm just, I just got here. I'm new. I don't know anybody. Uh, please don't hurt me. I just, I, I'm sorry. I won't, I won't do it again here. I, I, I just, here, here's my question to you, man. <laughs> Are you crying for real, or is this fully lying? That's lying. <laughs> Deception check. It is crocodile tears. Deception check. Deception. Man, this thing's bouncy. 18, 20. Plus Ooh, 30, 20. 20. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> uh, he he kind of like, now there's like just tears running down your face, <laughs> and he goes, oh, okay, lad, I... <laughs> You know, we've all, it's, it's been hard for, you know, the world is, it's really, 
Do we need? I need a drink. Do you need a drink? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get a drink. And he just kind of like goes and gets drinks for you, and turns back around and gives one to you. And he's just like, "What? What's your name?" What? Sonny. Sonny. It's good to meet you, Sonny. My name's Forheim. Forheim. It's good to meet you. Why did you come to the den? I was telling the truth. I'm looking to hunt mon monsters. There's a herd counting on me. Um, and I've got to get better. So I'm here to find those people that are going to help me. Well, just trying to get better? Or are you trying to make some coin while you're at it? Doesn't hurt, huh? I might have to introduce you to my friends. Uh, and he kind of points at another four people over in the corner. And he goes, <clears throat> come with me. And he takes you over and you kind of find these other people around. There's uh, three, there's four other people there, uh, two women, three guys. Um, and they're all just these like muscle bound, gnarly, ratty hair. Like they're just very dirty, dangerous looking people. Um, and he goes, everyone, I'd like you to meet Sonny. Uh, he's a new guy. I just caught him trying to pickpocket someone. So, you know, keep your wallets tight. However, <laughs> he started crying and that's embarrassing. So I just kind of like wanted to introduce him to people so he wasn't so pathetic. <laughs> and the other four people look up at you and the, the woman sitting near the front. She's got this like uh, uh, leather strapped brassiere and then this big great sword along her back. The big braid wrapped around and is along her uh, shoulder. And she goes, you were crying? Oh, I just, I mean, just a little, you know, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like your brassiere. <laughs> <laughs> Roll of persuasion. <laughs> no, just flat, just charisma, just charisma. <laughs> As she goes, she stares at you for a moment and then just starts getting up without saying a word. <laughs> just starts walking toward you. And uh, uh, Fornheim just kind of jumps away and goes, No, not Selma. Selma, you remember. She's about two and a half feet taller than him. He goes, Selma, no, remember, we try to not kill children. <laughs> That's one of like the only things we don't do. So just this time, let the lad go. Again, he is a pathetic child. <laughs> um, and she kind of just like sits back down with a grunt. And so Forheim just kind of grabs you by the back and goes, well, lad, these are my friends here. We uh, work in and out of the den. We're just a you know a small band of mercenaries. You know we we do a bit of side jobs for coin. We hunt. We protect. We do whatever needs to be done. Are you looking to make some coin? You said. Um. Yeah. 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 I'm. Uh, yeah. Money. More money. <laughs> well, uh, won't be till later. But there's somebody I might want to introduce you to. We'll see. I'll have to talk to him first. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Go cry in a corner. Mm. No, that was a command. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll see you later, huh? I'll walk away. <laughs> Hey, Haley here. This episode is sponsored by Firelight Fables, a fantasy and tabletop RPG inspired candle maker for transporting you to magical worlds. Embark on a sensory journey with their storytelling candles meticulously crafted to transport you directly into the heart of your favorite fantasy books or immerse you in your D&D adventures. Whether you're a devoted reader, a tabletop gaming enthusiast, or a creative spirit seeking inspiration for your latest hobby or craft, they transport you to magical worlds with just the light of a wick. This season, we got to use scents like Thieves Guild, Rustic Tavern, and Dungeon Dell to enhance the experience of our campaign. Not only do these candles smell amazing, but they're made from high quality, toxin-free ingredients, including essential oils and natural wax. For 10% off, use code HOMEBREW10, all one word at checkout. When you use this code, not only do you receive a discount, but you help out the show with each candle sold. So thank you for supporting us and small businesses like Firelight Fables. Hey adventurers, it's Dominic here. 
House of Homebrew is a labor of love for all of us here on the show. Not only has it been a full-time job for Haley, Jamie, and I, but the work our cast and crew put into production is extensive. It's expensive to create, and we only hope to improve the quality even more for our future seasons. If you like the show, you can support us in a few ways. Like our episodes, subscribe to our channel, and please share us with your friends. If you want to see more, you can subscribe to our Patreon and enjoy bonus content including The Last Call, our after show shot directly after each episode where we discuss our backstories and dive even deeper into the world of Altadia, as well as bonus content, sponsor content, and so much more. Your viewership means the world to us. We couldn't live out this dream without you, so thank you so much. Now, let's get back to the show. <laughs> uh, Asita, after you're done praying, you walk in. I walk in and I'm being constantly bumped into and I'm bumping into other people and tripping over chairs and beer and meat is getting sloshed on my perfectly clean, pristine white and golden inlaid robes. And I'm looking around. I don't know who I'm looking for yet, but I'm looking for who's in charge um, and who might be a leader of this group. And so naturally I make my way to the bartender. Uh, which is the passed out drunk man yeah. on the floor. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> who might be coming too. Uh, oh. Well, you uh, get over to him. He is not coming to you. <laughs> you see a very drunk man snoring loudly on the floor with a little bit of vomit dripping out of his mouth. Hey, uh, excuse me. Excuse me? Hello? <clears throat> Hi. He got a roll of living. Hi, I'm, um, I'm looking for somebody who is the leader of the... Iron uh, foxes. Uh, so. That's you. Oh, <laughs> I'm no. I'm Asim. 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 That's your name. I'm a Sita. That's no. Name. It's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, I'm sorry. Well, okay. You know what I I just need to rest my eyes. It's Asim. 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 Is that a uh, S? Asim. A S. O N. I can't spell what are you talking. You well, think I'm a fucking smarty pants like you? You fucking No, I'm a you're, you're you you're shiny. <laughs> and this is hurting my eyes. I'm like, you're fucked. <laughs> anyway. Uh, not bad. Well, okay, so um your your liege, um, your honor, your, <laughs> since you are the leader of the iron foxes, uh, I have <laughs> questions for you, sir. Uh your uh your majesty. I um, was wondering, actually, uh, I'm looking to join the Monster Hunters. Uh, I made a promise both to my late mentor. Uh, his name was uh, Katso, and I also made a promise to um, the Lord of Light, Paylor. Uh, may he reign forever through light and love. And I just... He hit me with a lot of words. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I got a lot of words. Oh, just slow down. It's just, 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 you, and luckily, right then, walking down the stairs, you see a really tall Middle Eastern looking man with a uh, scarf wrapped around his head, these beautiful purple robes swinging <laughs> down, uh, jewelry all up, both arms, uh, walking down the steps. And you see, he goes, my friends. I'm so happy you all made it back safely today. The rations and preserves and any other supplies that you need will be handed out momentarily so that you can all get on your way, but I do insist that you all spend the night. Thank you all so much for coming. Why, and he points at the drunk guy, goes, does he just not know how to drink? Does Somebody get Deskin, pick him up, and get him out of here back to his bed. I'm so tired. Can we just kick him out? He's kicked out. I said it. No, he's kicked out. We're done. We're done with him. Oh. And you see a couple people run over and grab the guy that you were talking to and just kind of drag him uh, up and out of the room. Oh, you must be second in command. <laughs> <laughs> My name is um, Asita. You see, he kind of looks down at you and he goes... Roll a charisma check for me first. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> oh, God. 17 plus Ooh. one. Oh! 18? Not bad. Yeah. Cool. Not bad. Cool. Um, you see this man looks down at you and goes, Close. Uh, my name is Asim. It's very nice to meet you, Asita. 
Yes. You have the same name as the bartender. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. He looks at you and he goes, you're not that smart. Has anyone ever told you that? And I mean that with all due respect. People don't talk to me very much. I can kind of <laughs> tell and understand, however, you seem like a nice kid. Thanks. The, you're holding my hand really tight. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take my hand back. Thank you so much. Acida. <laughs> yeah, that's my name. <laughs> that's, that's my name. Yeah. 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 It's wonderful to meet you. It's what was there something that you needed? You just ran up to me. Yeah. Um Can I talk now? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Go. Okay. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Asita. I said that already. You <laughs> I am here. I am a, 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 an early priest of the Amaranthic Temple. And I serve hey, well. the Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm aware of your clergy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know I'm here. Uh, they send out clerics and young priests in training all the time. They usually don't come here, but... Well, our clergy um, spans pretty much anywhere within the kingdom that we can find. And we spread our message of light and love and hope. Um, and I was sent on a mission from Paylor. And I'm here to um, treasure my loyalty to the Iron Foxes and support in any way that I can on their mission to rid this land from evil. Well, I'm happy to have you. And I start to take off a pair, a, a ringlet of wooden beads from my wrist. This is a token of my loyalty to you, your excellency, to the Iron Foxes. <laughs> and I pledge my life and my servitude to the Iron Foxes. Uh, may they forever reign and sh be shine upon the light of uh, God Paylor. <laughs> uh, he takes the bracelet <laughs> and he considers it for a moment before he says, thank you. Thank you. Your service means a lot. Do you have a room yet? Has anyone set you up? No. I, you're the first, well, second person I've talked to. Okay. Let me go take care of some stuff, and I'll send someone to help you out, okay? Thank you. And he, like, make sure you see him put the bracelet on with his many other bracelets. Wow. <laughs> he was tall. <laughs> As Asim had come down the stairs, Perry had finally been able to stop right. playing because there was an announcement, and looks down at you guys, and he goes, I can't believe you guys actually made it. I'm so, so happy to see you. How you guys been? We haven't seen you since Walls during the Equinox Festival. All right. Uh, all right. It's uh, it's good to see you. Uh, it's been a bit. Yeah, it's been like a, like a month or two. Let's uh let's not bring up the Equinox Festival. <laughs> oh, right, I actually right, do yeah. remember. What was that dwarf girl's name that you were after? Uh, we don't need to talk what, about what, that no, dwarf girl. Name? I can't. No, I can't remember <laughs> what that name was, and I really want to hear you say it. Marguerite. Damn, Marguerite. She had a nice beard on her, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost as nice as yours. Almost. Almost. Oh, very, very <laughs> she, she was, she was <laughs> No, no, no. Come on. I see what you got going oh, okay, on, man. Pretty. That thing was good, man. She was pretty. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty. Well, I'm happy you guys are here. Wait, wait, wait. When did you... When you just got in today? When, when, are you staying for long? I mean... I mean, we're staying for... Uh, Hey, wait, wait, you on. guys are officially joining the Iron Foxes. Okay. How do we? Where, where do I sign up? You already did it. You guys are here. <laughs> they accept anybody as long as you don't piss them off. You are now a fully fledged member. It is a bit of a commune. Not a super huge fan of that. I'd like people to just kind of work for what they have. But right. you know, that's just my own personal political beliefs. I do not like government. However, <laughs> <laughs> however I am very happy to see you guys. Oh, so, we're happy to see you. Oh come, oh, come on, Fist. Oh, come on, Fist. I love that. You know I love that energy, man. I love that energy. Let's go, dude. Hey, you want to you wanna play a couple instruments with me? Absolutely. Oh, 100%. I got a new set coming up in a couple minutes. I'm going to oh. just go get, like, a grab a drink or something. You guys already got... You got drinks already? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, good for you. You want to finish that guy? <laughs> Y'all want to see something fucking hilarious. Right. So there's, like, this, this, uh, this fairy guy here, right? The wings and everything. You know what I mean? It is the easiest thing in the world to just absolutely fuck with that kid. 100%. He doesn't know who he is. Well, could you believe it? He has no idea who he is. It's unbelievable. Never met anybody like him. Could not tell you his name. Doesn't have one. 
He's over in the in the library. He, you guys want to come with? He doesn't know who he is. No, like literally, he does not know who he is. Oh, I'd love I, to meet. I'd love to meet. <laughs> my, my favorite thing is just write a name. He's got a little board where like he has like a thing that he's like, oh, if that's what that says, that's who I am. And like, but he can't say. I, it's weird as fuck. You guys are gonna love it. But if we erase it and write something else on there, he just responds to it. All right. You we gotta check this out. We gotta check this out. Let's do it. All right, I'm here for it. And you guys <laughs> head off with Perry. <laughs> oh, I love Perry. I love Perry. <laughs> Blair, you are already there. Yeah. Uh, you walk in. And as you walk down this hallway, uh, you see, uh, open the door, and this beautiful lab opens up in front of you. Uh, there are just tables strewn with different alchemical potions and different tools and mirrors just reflecting things everywhere and crystals hanging from the ceiling. And uh, over, way over in the corner, there's this giant uh, opening, basically, with windows all around it. You're, the floor is 40 feet up from the ground level of like where the ground floor was that you came from. It is just straight up on stilts on the side of this building. Uh, and you see this weird giant egg sitting in the middle of a, uh, a bunch of sigils over in that big rounded area that's kind of overlooking uh, where the rivers come together, right? You hear a little voice up in the corner. And as you look up, you see kind of muttering to themselves, is this, fairy wrapped in a bedcloth just kind of flitting back and forth just going oh that's what it is and i it was a, it was a, I, if it's absolutely it's so excuse me huh are you a librarian here who uh who you who are you a library huh <laughs> <laughs> library you're looking for library Yes. Library. This is the library. And he flies down to where all the books are, and there's just like <laughs> volumes on volumes, and he grabs a shelf and pulls it out, and it's like shelves in like bookshelf file cabinets. Then he just like pulls it out, and there's like a wall, and then more books, and then more books. And he's like flitting over the top. He goes, You want books? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you be able to help me find certain books? Who? You. <laughs> Would you be able to help me? Where's the library? Library? <laughs> yeah. You want the library? We're in the library. We're in the library. <laughs> this is the books. I see that. Uh, where's the librarian? <laughs> what are you looking for? Uh, well, I'm looking for a very special book about a yes. certain type of monster that yes. lives in the forest. Yes. But the problem is, yes. I'm not quite sure what it's called. And that's why no. I thought the book would help if there's like an encyclopedia of forest monsters. Encyclopedia of forest monsters. Yes. And he takes <laughs> off, <laughs> down the line, goes straight to the right spot, pulls it open, reaches four books back, grabs it out. It's this big green tome. And he just slams it closed and comes flying back to goes, encyclopedia. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, <laughs> where do I check this out at? Uh, nowhere. Do I just take it? Put it back. But I have to read it. <laughs> after. I I put it back after I've read it. Yes. That's the way things work. Library. It's just like a trust system. <laughs> 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 okay, fantastic. I love that. Um, do you have like a favorite reading corner? Who? You. Who? You, you, do you help? Never mind, I'll find it. Thank you so much for your help. You see his eyes every time you're doing this is just kind of like space because there's there's light up in like the top of this room and there's this like collection of crystals that's just kind of like glinting and like throwing rainbows everywhere. And so every time you keep like saying you, you, and his brain just doesn't and it's just shiny. <laughs> well, um, uh, thank you very much, sir. You shake it. Ah! Thank you. Have a splendid day, would you? Who? <laughs> I, I just go sit down. Go sit down. You're sorry to... um, You see that he immediately um, forgets. It's like it's like he's oblivious that he's in a room with you. He's. He's just doing stuff in the room. So he's like flying around and like grabbing different bushels of herbs and then taking them over and mortaring and pestling them and then pouring them in things. And then he'll like go over to where the runes are and then he'll just kind of like 
look at them real quick and he will like kind of get confused and then he'll run back to another book and just kind of flip something open and just keeps like whirlwinding going around the room like this. Blair writes all of that down and makes a <laughs> diagram <laughs> of the different for stations sure. he goes to. Uh, make a um, perception check for me. Ooh. That is uh, 18. 18. That was really good. Um, you see, uh, first thing that you notice is you do notice a little chalkboard with uh, Solus Day written on it, which is also the day of the week. Um, and you see that uh, uh, as he's kind of flying around and doing all this stuff, um, he always keeps going back to the crystals and then back out and then going to the runes. And it's like something is important, but he doesn't know. And then he will fly away and then continue to just kind of like work. Uh, you notice that a lot of the reagents and stuff uh, bubble over as he's working on them, but always he always gets back to them in time before it spills. So he's just like this weirdly high functioning, like just watching his movement around here, everything's under control. As chaotic as it looks, everything is snip snap, like if boiling over, but it doesn't. And like everything is pristine where it needs to be when it needs to be there. Fascinating, fascinating. Uh, you guys, enter the room, as you come to enter the room, I should say, uh, you see a little gnome girl sitting in the corner. There's this like little round table where she's at, just kind of like flipping through a book and then watching and taking notes of this weird ass fairy that's in nothing but a bed sheet. Uh, and it's got these like purple and blue butterfly wings sprouting from his back and this bright gold poof of hair on top of his head. Uh, and he's just kind of like zip zapping around the room and Perry goes, all right guys, see that over there? Oh, somebody already did it. Okay, it'll be better this way. Somebody wrote the name of the day on his name board. So watch this. Solace Day. And you see the thing, the, the fairy looks down at the board and then looks at the voice and he goes, yes. <laughs> and he goes, nothing, you're good. And he goes, who, who, who? And then flies away. <laughs> if you just use a pronoun that refers specifically to him, it breaks him. It's Fucking hilarious. Hey, you. Who? Hi. Who? And he like flew. Now he's just like flying toward the crystals like a moth to a flame. Hi. <laughs> fairy boy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Huh? Fairy boy. Soreless day. Ha ha ha. Nothing, sir. Carry on. Carry on. Uh, I turned to Perry. Uh, what's wrong with him? I mean, I don't really know nobody really I like, knows while you guys are talking i hop over the board <laughs> and i just like erase <laughs> <laughs> he he leans over to your fist and he goes no one really knows what happened to him i mean fairies get up to some weird shit the fey people are a wild bunch it's like he has no concept of himself interacting with the world however he does interact with it and it overloads his system somehow couldn't tell you how it happened but something major happened to that guy. And he was found outside just kind of like rearranging mushrooms and herbs in the garden out there. And somebody brought him in, took him under our wing. We kind of figured that if we just throw a toga on him or something, that he'll just, you know, his dick won't be out anymore. But <laughs> yeah. nice enough guy doesn't mean any harm. It's just hysterical. I've written Gary on the board. <laughs> you feel just a tug on your shirt. Excuse me. All right. Are you supposed to be doing that? Shh. I was told. Solus Day? Uh, it looks toward <laughs> the board, sees that Solus Day is not written on it, and goes back to what it's doing. Watch, watch. Gary? Looks toward the board, <laughs> looks at you. Yes. <laughs> carry on, carry on. Is his name Gary? Shh. Watch this. I <laughs> <laughs> And then I put Blair on there. That's my name. Shh. <laughs> Gary. Looks at the board. Don't shout. Looks away. And then Blair. Looks at the board. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so strange. I, uh, I turn to Perry. Uh, why, why have him around? I mean, honestly, he's really good at what he does. What Outside of the whole personality thing, if you need information about any type of monster, he's got it here. He will find it immediately. He has a 
seemed like, like a perfect recall of this entire room and knows what's happening with all the things he's touched. I don't really know how to explain it, but maybe the like personality left and then the brain just took the rest of it. He's an absolute genius. I mean, he made me this loop. He made it for me. You're joking. I'm not. The lyric, it's... Uh, oh, you like her? Yeah. Cynthia. Uh, well, uh, Cynthia. Oh, man. She's a party one, ain't she? And he just starts plucking this wonderful little tune on you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, how can I help you? This is a library. You're playing music, and it's disturbing the readers. Uh, you oh. see, you guys watch Perry kind of clock her <laughs> and go, I'm very sorry about that. My apologies to you. Of course. I get in the way and I go, Perry, is this girl bugging you? <laughs> <laughs> no, miss, she's fine. And I appreciate you. Thank beast. you so much. Perry, Blair. Blair, Perry. Uh, it's nice, Na- to nice, to nice to meet you, darling. Nice to meet you. Right, right. right. Uh, technically, the library over there, you're more in the, uh, uh, I'd say, uh, chemist lab, perhaps. Uh, I don't know, uh, study. It's all the library. They're working. I'm working. You're the only one not working. Just talk, 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 talking. And it's very disturbing. I'm trying to read. What makes you think we're not working? What's you working on? Monster. Monster hunting. hunting. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. Well, if you could work on monster hunting a little quieter, that would be awesome. Thank you. Right, right. I, I think it would be fair that you, as you were kind of clocking stuff around, you saw the troublemakers go somewhere else. <laughs> and I don't know if that what makes you want to follow them or not. Oh, certainly. Yeah? Absolutely. Okay. I've hung back, of course. of course. I'm not really trying to draw their attention, but I'm observing. For All right. Sure. Do you have a question, though? Blair. Not you. Hi. Blair. Who? Blair. Not you. Who? <laughs> Blair. Not you. You. I Who? don't like this game. This is a mean game. All right, all right. Do you, do you see that every time you do this in quick succession, like veins start like creeping out? He's like, Who? Uh, Blair. All right. Question about monsters. Hmm. Right. Uh, uh, would you happen to know about a monster? How, how big would you say it is? Uh, Eight feet, nine feet, maybe. Furry jumps through portals, maybe. Big, scary. And he takes off, goes, grabs the book, brings it back to you, and flips the page open to a displacer beast. Displacer beast? Mm hmm. Uh, does it look like the monster that. No. No. It's not the right one. That's not it. It's not it. Uh, uh, fangs. And he points to the fangs on the displacer beast. Thanks. Right. Uh, yes, thanks. 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 Carry on. It's not very useful, is it? Not very useful. All right, Perry. Uh, so where do, we, where do we start? I mean, what do you guys... You guys are just trying to train and learn, right? I mean, I guess we could just chill out in here, but it's getting kind of late. I'd rather just go hang out near the bar and fuck with some more people, play a little bit more music, and have a good time. Let's I mean, it. you guys are more than welcome to stay, <laughs> but, like, I'm going to go downstairs. Before I go, I go up to the board and just put, um, I, I erase Blair and I just put fascinating. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Um, the mayor, as, as, as these guys are all leaving, you are in that hallway after having watched them. Right. As I walk past you, I say, what's your name? Nemea. Nemea? Gina Bit? Nice to meet you. And I just walk away with, with Barry going, going downstairs. Uh, as you guys are doing that, she's headed in there. What are you guys up to? I'm just trying to stay out of everyone's way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're doing a good job. <laughs> it probably honestly take you up onto the landing where you can see down that hall. It, 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 every, everybody located. down low, it's just kind of like this tumultuous mess of people just yeah. wandering around drinking and throwing shit and having fun. Yeah. Um, I, I walk away from the from the group of people into the hallway. <sighs> Two minutes here, and I'm already uh, making enemies, being treated like shit. Excuse me. 
Uh, what's your name? Sonny. Rainy. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a second. Okay, no, um, Acida. Acida Manoffin. Nice to meet you. It's very nice to meet you. Um, uh, what are you doing here? I came here to hunt monsters, like everybody here. You hunt, you hunt monsters? Yeah. Oh, okay. What are you doing here? Well, I'm... Praying? Yeah. How did you know? Well, I like to pray. It's not what I'm doing right now. I'm talking to you, and I feel like I'm kind of pissing you off. <laughs> I better be praying. You know who you should meet? <laughs> Forheim. Forheim? Yeah. He's this great Forheim. little dwarf. He is the nicest guy. Where? Who? Where? Who? Where? Well, he's hanging out in the tavern. Tavern? Yeah. He's uh, this whole thing's a tavern. short little, well, a little bit down to the right. He's at a table with a couple friends. Selma, yeah. one of the ladies there. His uh, friends. Yeah. You should compliment her, Brazier. Anyways, uh, I'm just going to keep to my business. Um... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> nice meeting you. Um, what's the brazier real quick? Uh, <laughs> no, it's, no, it's just kind of sad for you, bud. Uh, it's, you know, our top. Top? Yeah. What's her? Oh. Um, okay, so Fullerheim's, uh, her, is it hers? Talk to her about her brazier and it's her top. <laughs> yep. Compliment Fullerheim's Compliment the top. brazier. Um, what about the bottom? What do you know about if you, bottoms? If you want to compliment her bottom, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I think she would probably love it. Passable. Anyways, bottom. I'm going to keep walking. Thanks. Oh, hey, nice I, to meet you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> As he completely leaves you hanging, you guys are up on the landing, and Perry is just kind of getting to the bottom of the stairs. You see everybody kind of like looks over and sees Perry and goes, Oh! And he goes, all right, everybody, we're ready for round two. Let's party. And as soon as he does that, an explosion of magic levels the room. Not in destruction, but you see this pulse of purple energy level out across the room. And you see every single person in the room. You guys were all on the second floor. None of you got hit by whatever this was. Then, you start feeling something weird in the air. <laughs> There's almost like a static electricity. You can feel the tips of your red hair starting to raise up around you as you kind of start looking around. And you look up and you see, what's his name at this point? Oh, fascinating. Oh, fascinating. You see fascinating. <laughs> uh, go. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not good. That's not good. Fascinating. Huh? What is it? There! And he points over at the egg. And you see the runes are starting to disintegrate around it as energy starts to swirl around the egg. You guys all start to feel this sucking of wind pulling you, not strong enough to move you, into the lab as you start feeling an actual tug against you as a almost energetic tornado starts to swirl around this egg in the center of the room. And you see Fascinating goes, oh no, ah, he's, oh, ah, and starts, and runs straight at it. That's where we're gonna end the session. so much for tuning in to the very first episode of the House of Homebrew Dragon Song Adventure Responsibility. Yeah! <laughs>